Hello everyone, welcome back to Comment Made Easy and I hope you all are doing very well. Before we begin, let me remind my dear students that the contents of this channel are only to supplement your knowledge, not to replace the regular online and offline classes in your institution. So please attend your classes and do not miss them. Also, if you like our contents, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos and share these videos with your friends, with your batchmates, with your juniors. Also, if you are a teacher, then with your students. Please follow our Facebook page and the link will be given in the description. Today, we shall have a short discussion on blindness. Even though the title of the video says blindness, we are also going to talk about visual impairment. Blindness, visual impairment, all these are one of the most common public health issues in our country. We know that this is a a non-communicable disease and we have discussed many other non-communicable diseases in our previous videos. What is blindness? The criteria to define blindness was given by World Health Organization or WHO and it says blindness is defined as visual acuity of less than 360 on Snell's chart or its equivalent. So that means if we use the Snell's chart, the visual acuity has to be worse than 3 by 60 or we can use any other equivalent chart and there will be some different cutoff value for that. So we have to use Snell's chart or any other chart which is equivalent to Snell's chart. And according to Snell's chart, the visual acuity has to be less than 3 by 60 to be defined as blindness. We also have the International Classification Disease, the 11th version or ICD-11, which was published in the year 2018. And it classifies visual impairment as distance vision impairment where people have difficulty seeing things which is at far and also near vision impairment where the people have difficulty seeing things close to him for example reading newspaper or books according to ICD-11 we have mild moderate and severe distance vision impairment and we can also have the complete blindness so what is mild moderate and severe distance vision impairment when the visual acuity is worse than 6 by 12, it is considered as mild vision impairment. If it is worse than 6 by 18, it is considered as moderate distance vision impairment. And then we have severe vision impairment or severe distance vision impairment where the visual acuity is worse than 6 by 60. If it is worse than 3 by 60, as we have defined earlier in our previous slide, it is considered as blindness. What about near vision impairment? Presenting near vision acuity worse than N6 or N08 at 40 cm with existing correction. Now, you may be confused with these numbers. So, there are different charts available to assess the near vision. And when the chart is held at 40 cm distance, then we, we have to look at different words or numbers at a, uh, which are of different sizes. And based on the size of the letters or the numbers that the person can read with, with his best effort, uh, his visual acuity is uh, defined. So if it is worse than N6 or N08, now these are the numbers which are given different letters and different numbers or digits of uh, different sizes. So they have this chart. And if it is worse than these particular numbers, it is considered as near vision impairment. Now, one of the most commonly asked explain my question or even come, uh, it can come as a short note from this particular topic is why majority of the blindness are preventable or avoidable. So that means there are certain reasons behind this visual impairment or even blindness which we can prevent. Let us look at some numbers. Globally, 2.2 billion people have a near or distance vision impairment. We can see there is a huge burden of near and distance visual impairment. About 80% of blindness is avoidable, either treatable or potentially preventable. However, a large proportion of this affected remain blind for want of or lack of access to affordable eye care. So people cannot access affordable eye care and because of that they cannot prevent or treat conditions which ultimately lead to blindness and as the number says about 80% of the blindness 
is avoidable. So you, you see that there are a lot of cases of blindness which can either be avoided, they can be prevented or even treated. If we look at some of the major causes of moderate to severe vision impairment, we will see the reasons like uncorrected refractive errors. People have refractive errors but they do not use spectacles, they do not get their eyes checked by ophthalmologist or optometrist, they do not know what power of spectacles they need to use. You, you will also come across people who have spectacles. They will say that I have spectacles but I do not wear it because I do not feel comfortable. So these uncorrected refractive errors compress 53% of the reasons of moderate to severe visual impairment. Then we have unoperated cataract. So cataract, there is surgery available for cataract and when they are not uh, they are not operated then we can also have moderate to severe vision impairment and it is about 25 percent of all the causes age related macular degeneration or armd comprises four percent of the causes you know this is something that can occur with aging and this is not actually uh, something that we can do anything about glaucoma there is treatment for glaucoma where the intraocular tension is increased diabetic retinopathy is one percent Diabetic retinopathy can also be prevented if the sugar level can be kept under control. So strict uh, glycemic control is very important uh, to avoid some of the complications due to diabetes like diabetic retinopathy, diabetic nephropathy, diabetic neuropathy, etc. The major causes of blindness are unoperated cataract that is 35% uncorrected refractive error 21 percent glaucoma 80 percent so all these three reasons can be prevented and also there is treatment available for conditions like uh, cataract glaucoma etc the most frequent cause of blindness in developed countries now we are talking about western countries european countries america etc uh, these are the accidents glaucoma diabetes vascular diseases like hypertension cataract, degeneration of ocular tissue, especially the retina and hereditary condition. You will see even in the developed countries, some of the reasons of blindness are preventable, like accidents can be prevented. Glaucoma, there is treatment available. Diabetes, there is treatment available. Hypertension can be controlled. Cataract, there is operation or surgery available for that. This is uh, the data from 2015 to 19 National Survey on Blindness in India where we can see the reasons of blindness in people above 50 years of age. If you look at different reasons, let us look at the reasons first. We have refractive error, aphakia uncorrected, that means there is no lens after maybe a cataract surgery, cataract untreated, cataract surgical complications, trachometer's corneal opacity, non trachometer's corneal opacity, we have thesis, thesis bulby, glaucoma, diabetic retinopathy, age-related macular degeneration, other posterior segment diseases, all other globe or CNS abnormalities. And if you look at the percentages, uh, we will see that 66.2% of this blindness are because of cataract untreated. People are not opting for surgery, which is available, which is available everywhere. So cataract surgeries are so very, so much common now, nowadays. You, you will find cataract surgery being done even at the secondary level of hospitals very commonly and also in some eye camps that is being organized everywhere around the country other major reasons you will see we have 7.2 percent where the cataract surgery complications complications can occur from any surgery non trachomatous corneal opacity so the most common cause here is the cataract which is untreated so surgery is not opted for there are two pie charts in this particular slide. The first one is the same as the one I have discussed here. So I'm going to skip it. If you look at the causes of visual impairment, the last one was about the blindness. This is about the visual impairment in the people over 50 years in India. We'll see that 71.2% is cataract untreated. Again, same thing. Another major reason is 13.4% that is refractive error. Again, same thing. People are not using spectacles. Either they have not got their eyes checked at all or maybe many of them they already have spectacles but they do not use it that is another problem 5.9 percent is cataract surgical complications so yes again surgical complications is common that is another reason for visual impairment 
so even from these particular numbers you can say that some of the reasons like uncorrected refractive errors cataract etc even glaucoma diabetic retinopathy all these conditions are either preventable or treatable there are treatments available which keep the condition under control there are surgery available for certain conditions and if people avail these services and follow the advices and treatment regimen given by the doctor majority of the blindness as well as visual impairment can be prevented in indian population also in other developing and developed countries so that is the explain why question which is very common from this particular topic let us go to the epidemiological determinants certain factors which are somewhat associated with blindness may not cause blindness directly so these are the things or as i said variables which are associated with visual impairment or blindness for example age we will see that 30 percent of the blind people in india are said to lose their eyesight before they reach the age of 20 years and many under five years there are certain conditions which are very common at certain age group for example if you're talking about children and younger age group conditions like refractive error are now very common you will see children 20 years back if you compare them with children nowadays you will see there are a lot of uh, children now who are having spectacles at very early age so this is also a very good sign because that means people especially their parents are cautious and they are also following the doctor's advice the children are using the spectacles which is definitely good for them there is also trachoma conjunctivitis malnutrition especially vitamin a deficiency sorry uh, these are the reasons of uh, visual impairment as well as blindness in children and younger age group in the middle age we have cataract refractive error glaucoma diabetes and in the age group of 20 to 40 years we have reasons like accidents injuries etc so you see again many of these reasons are either preventable or there are treatment available for that coming to gender or sex higher prevalence of blindness is reported in females than in males and this is probably because of higher prevalence of trachoma conjunctivitis and cataract among females than in males so certain eye conditions have been found more commonly to occur among females and males which lead to blindness or visual impairment so that is also why we have higher rate or prevalence of blindness or visual impairment among females compared to males social class blindness is twice more prevalent in the poor classes than in the well-to-do population this is probably because of uh, lack of hygiene or you know um, difficult access to certain health care facilities etc malnutrition is a very important factor it is closely related with infectious diseases and these diseases can lead to visual impairment or blindness we know that malnutrition is a state where the immunity of that person goes down either temporarily or maybe for a very long period of time this that will invite a lot of infectious diseases especially measles and diarrhea diarrhea episodes in children that will lead to protein allergy malnutrition vitamin a deficiency etc and that will also lead to visual impairment keratomalacia is largely limited to the first four to six years of life and is especially frequent among six months to three years old. what is keratomalacia it is one of the ocular manifestation of vitamin a deficiency it is also known as liquefaction of eye where the eye will literally melts and it it is an irreversible condition and the sight is permanently lost occupation certain occupation puts the people at higher risk to develop eye conditions like people working in factories workshop cottage industries are prone to eye injuries because of exposure to dust airborne particles flying objects gases fumes radiation electric flash etc even doctors or even paramedical staffs, nurses who are uh, working in different departments, especially radiology department, they are exposed to X-rays and all these radiations, ultraviolet rays, heat waves. These things also put them at higher risk to develop the conditions. Social factors, another very important thing. We know that 
there are a lot of people all over the country especially in the rural areas where the government services may not be available so people have to go to the local quacks who are not qualified who are not registered doctors or practitioners they give treatment which may not be following any particular guideline and they not be scientifically proven so because of this middle sum ophthalmology practices by these quacks people can sometime uh, they can lose their eyesight so that is another big problem basic social factors are ignorance that is important poverty low standard of personal and community hygiene inadequate healthcare services this is this is probably one of the most important things people have to go to these quacks because they are available they are always available and they live among these people so they can also trust him but the problem is this person does not know anything about medical science because he is not a qualified person and he will just give certain antibiotics or steroids which may not be indicated in that certain condition and that can even make the things worse so that is why it should be avoided let us talk about the eye care services in our country we have the primary eye care secondary eye care and tertiary eye care primary eye care is the most basic level of eye care and it is uh, it has been included in the primary health care system it is a model for eye care at the community level so at just at the grassroots level or the first level what is the objective the objective is to increase the coverage and quality of eye health care through primary health care approach and thereby improve the utilization of the existing resources what do we have a wide range of eye conditions like acute conjunctivitis ophthalmia neonatorum trachoma superficial foreign bodies that means those foreign bodies which have not lost deep into the eye xerophthalmia that means the uh, vitamin and deficiency uh, ocular manifestations these things can be identified and then treated or prevented by the grassroots level worker like village health guide multi purpose workers who are the first contact with the community because these are not very difficult to identify conditions so this health level uh, i am sorry the health workers at the grassroots level if they are trained well enough they can identify this condition and they can also give some basic level of treatment right and if there are certain conditions which cannot be managed by them then they have to refer them for addressing these issues they are given certain things like tropical tetracycline which is given in trachoma vitamin a capsules or you know syrup formulation which is given to the children as regular prophylaxis eye bandages shields etc they are also trained to refer difficult cases that means they should be able to identify cases which they cannot manage like corneal ulcer penetrating foreign bodies some painful eye conditions and infections which do not respond to the treatment and they should refer this patients to the nearest nearest primary uh, healthcare center and then district hospital which is the secondary level their activities also involve promotion of personal hygiene sanitation good dietary habits and safety in general currently we have two multi purpose workers for 5000 population in india and we also have one village health guide for 100 population so this is the strength of grassroots level worker who is providing services at the grassroots level or the primary level for a given number of population and we can say they are hugely burdened so there is need to increase the number of village health guides multi purpose workers asha anm etc then we have the secondary eye care which involves definitive management of certain conditions which cannot be managed by the grassroots level worker and they include the cataract trichiasis entropion ocular trauma glaucoma etc these are the conditions which are to be treated by the specialist the ophthalmologist etc this care is provided in the primary health center where there is ophthalmologist present or even in the district hospital where we have i departments or i clinics and the secondary care may involve use of mobile eye clinics that is also possible this eye camp approach to make cataract surgery available has been highly successful we have discussed this earlier there are uh, multiple eye camps being organized all over the country throughout the year 
and even at this icons the cataract surgeries are are done so commonly so people can approach these eye camps they can register themselves and their cataracts can be operated apart from cataract operations these camps undertake general health service for the elderly for the early detection of visual defects as well as education of the masses because mass education the health education given to the people is very important they should be aware of the situations how they can prevent these eye conditions and how can also uh, avoid all these visual impairments and blindness and what to do if they have any eye condition next is the tertiary care where certain services are given in the national or regional capitals and are often associated with medical colleges and institute of medicine and they provide sophisticated eye care for example retinal detachment surgery corneal grafting and other complex forms of management not available in the secondary centers so there can be certain eye conditions which need highly sophisticated facilities because they they may require some complicated surgeries expertise etc which may not be available in the secondary level forget about primary level of uh, healthcare so that is why we have a regional institute of ophthalmology or rio at a different part of the country but there are only few in numbers other measures of rehabilitation comprise education of the blind in special schools utilization of the services in gainful employment so blind people they can also uh, have their special schools where they are trained and retrained uh, as a part of rehabilitation uh, to have their earning so that they can have uh, they can find certain job where they can get employed and they can also earn next we have certain specific programs related to eye health we have trachoma control where first important thing is they are told about the importance of hygiene personal hygiene and second thing the tetracycline is given which is a drug of choice in trachoma then we have school eye health services we know about school health services so that certain trained teachers they can identify certain health conditions of the child and they can also identify certain health conditions especially the eye conditions of these children for example they can they can check the their visual acuity using strenuous chart it is very easy they have to follow certain steps that's all and if any eye condition is found by them they can refer these children or the students from the school uh, to the nearest hospital where eye department is present and they these children get the treatment what the, whatever they need vitamin a prophylaxis we also know about this thing vitamin a is given there are nine mega doses which is given up to five years of age the first one is given at the age of nine to twelve months along with the first dose of, dose of measles rubella the second one is given along with the second dose of measles rubella somewhere around 18 months and after that every six months we give the next doses vitamin a in less than one year the dose is one lakh international unit after one year the dose is two lakh international unit i'm not going into details about vitamin a profile axis which shall be a different class but we have to know about this occupational eye health services especially since lot of occupations put the people or the employee at risk uh, to injuries and all it is very important that these people or these employees are trained about eye safety or workplace safety that can prevent any accidents or any eye injuries etc last we shall uh, talk a little bit about vision 2020 uh, the right to sight it is a global initiative that was launched by who in the year 1999 on the day of 18th february and the initiative was taken to eliminate avoidable blindness what was the objective of vision 2020 it was to assist member countries in developing sustainable system which will be uh, which will enable them to eliminate avoidable blindness from major causes like cataract xerophthalmia which is vitamin a deficiency ocular manifestation and other causes of childhood blindness refractive error low vision trachoma and other causes of corneal blindness by the year 2020 there are certain targets you can go to the internet or you can also find them in your textbook so this is all about the 
blindness as well as visual impairment in our country and also in many developing countries where we we have seen that lot of these causes are either preventable or avoidable or their treatment is also present cure is present or maybe surgeries are present for certain conditions so i think you should be able to explain why majority of the blindness in india are either preventable or avoidable with this we conclude today's session if you like the video please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your batchmates juniors and friends from other college we also have a facebook channel that you can follow the link is given in the description take care and we shall see you in our next video